On the left, we got the 545 by 39 and on the right, we got the standard 556. Both of these cartridges are using essentially the same diameter projectiles. Not exactly, but pretty close. Anyways, as you can see, the 545 is using a lot longer projectile than the 556, so we'll have to see how this does. These cartridges are compared to each other quite a bit, but what I'm wanting to know in today's video is which is better at penetrating hard targets. And by hard targets, I mean steel. Obviously. I haven't had time to come up with a new steel sled idea, so we're still going to be using steel sled V2. It should still do the trick though. These cartridges are going to be fired out of essentially the same setup with both rifles having a 16 inch barrel and both having the same exact red dot. The first thing that I'm wanting to do though is figure out just what kind of velocity difference we're talking about between these two cartridges. The 545 by 39 doesn't have any velocity markings on the box at all, so I have no idea what to expect. Looks like it was getting an average of 2885 feet a second with a standard deviation of 12.1. That is way better than I was thinking for bulk steel case ammo. For some reason I didn't bring as many FMJs as I thought so I'm only going to be shooting two for this velocity test. Looks like the 55 grain FMJ out of the 556 was going an average of 3039 feet a second with a relatively high standard deviation but there was only two shots. I think I almost forgot to mention that I'd be adding a couple more bullet types into the mix. On the right we got the standard 556 M855 green tip and on the left we got the 7N6. Both of these projectiles have a little surprise inside so I'm pretty excited to see how they do on the steel. That 7N6 is absolutely screaming out of that 16 inch barrel. It's going an average of 3,079 feet a second, but the real story is that standard deviation right there. 5.2. Guys, that's better than most of my reloads. Well, I only got two of those shots to register, but the green tip was getting an average of 2,982 feet a second with a standard deviation of 21.9. I guess we should probably get this testing started like usual with a quarter inch steel plate. I think we're good to go. Hopefully I'm able to see these markings out of the red dot, but no promises. Anyways, let's go ahead and set it up in the target. There we go. And now, without further ado, it's time to start the testing, but which cartridge shall we start with? I think the 545 is a good choice. Pretty decent shot placement, and it went straight through. That's a pretty clean hole right there. And now, on to the 5.56. Five, Pretty much the exact same performance right there, although it kind of does look like a flower compared to the other one. I'm having a pretty hard time seeing these, but anyways, still a pretty decent shot right there, and it went straight through. Looks like there's a lining in there, though. That's pretty cool. After further investigation, it looks like most of the jacket got left behind. Just don't even ask about that shot. Guys, I literally had to aim all the way out here to hit this spot right here. I have no idea why the point of impact shift is so different between the 55 grain FMJ and the green tip, but anyways, all the rounds went through the quarter inch as expected. That green tip looks pretty cool. Well, they all beat the quarter inch plate, so I think you know the next step up. That's right, 3 8 inch plate. Good to go. I think I'm going to leave the markings off though, because I really couldn't even see those. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this set up. There we go. Before we carry on with the testing though, I want to give a big thanks to Midway USA for sponsoring my channel. I have been shopping at Midway USA for almost a decade now because they've been such a great company over the years in my experience. And if you're in the market for just about anything hunting, outdoors, or firearm related, I would definitely recommend going and checking them out. With cartridges that really don't put out that much kinetic energy, 3 8 inch plate can be a little bit of a struggle, but we'll go ahead and see if Velocity can carry both of these cartridges through. See what I mean? That 3 8 inch plate stopped that FMJ cold. It looks pretty close to the post, however, it is just inside, so there was no interference on the back. Let's see if the 5.56 FMJ has any better luck, although I can't say that it will. I guess something must be loose on that 5.56 because the bullet hit all the way up here, but I was aiming down here. Well, I guess we better try that again. Ah. 
Once again, I had to aim all the way over here, so I guess the gun is just shooting to the left. Anyways, that 55 grain FMJ did not go through. It went super deep though. I'm really hoping that the special surprise in each of the next bullets changes up the luck a little bit, but let's go ahead and see. I literally hit right above the 5.56 and that 7 and 6 did not go through. Let's go ahead and try it again and make sure that we can't get any more performance out of it. Absolutely nothing. Just about the same performance as that FMJ right there. I'm not gonna lie, that 7 and 6 performance on steel is a little bit disappointing, but let's go ahead and see if the M855 is gonna go through. Well, I think I finally learned where to aim with that 5.56, but anyways, how was the performance? Does not look like it went through. I can kind of see something in there. It didn't hit the post either, so let's check out the back. Whew, look at how close that was to going through. It's basically poking out the back. I think that's the insert in there that you could see. Well, at least out of 16 inch barrels, the performance on both of these cartridges is a little bit underwhelming. Anyways, let's go back to the bench and see which one penetrated deeper. Guys, you are not going to believe this, but I was just walking back and I stumbled upon this. I think that this is the insert from the 7 and 6. Look at that perfect mushroom shape right there. Definitely looks like steel. Now hold on just a second. You want me to grind and measure each one of these holes right here? I thought we already determined that the M855 was poking out the back. Oh, I'm just making excuses because it's time to grind. <laughs> Now it's probably pretty obvious that the M855 definitely penetrated the deepest, but let's go ahead and get the measurements on each just so that we know. So how do all these bullets do? I am well aware that this is not the most scientific method of measuring in the world, but it should give us a pretty good reference as to which one actually penetrated the deepest. Anyways, the 60 grain FMJ fired out of the 545 penetrated 0.168 inches. The 7 and 6, the first one that landed right above the 556, penetrated 0.173 inches, and the second one penetrated 0.202 inches, so a little bit deeper there. The 55 grain FMJ fired out of the 556 penetrated 0.288 inches. And surprisingly, the M855 only penetrated 0.265 inches. But one thing that we have to keep in mind is that the steel penetrator insert was still stuck in the steel, which is what the bottom of the calipers were reading on. It was poking through the backside, so I think ultimately we'll give the win to the M855. And now let's take a look at the steel penetrator insert that I found from the 545. That is just about the most perfect mushroom shape I've ever seen. And before anybody asks, here's a magnet to verify that it is a steel insert. The thing that I don't get about this steel penetrator though is why exactly did it mushroom out because when I was looking up this bullet type to do some research on it one of the sources claimed that it had a hardness of 60 HRC. Now the first idea and probably the most likely is that this steel penetrator was not hardened to levels anywhere near 60 HRC. The second idea though is that as the bullets riding down the rifling Obviously with the copper jacket and everything intact on it. But anyways, as it's riding down the rifling, heat is generated and this heat could have been enough to soften up the steel enough to mushroom out like this. I'm not 100% sure though. Now it's definitely possible that both of these ideas could be wrong, but anyways, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas. Bananas. <laughs>